want to know that all students are uh, attending this course online only na yes sir so so unlike the previous class where we it used to be more didactic with powerpoint slides this particular presentation i am doing from more practical point of view from more uh, clinical perspective and i guess all the students are attending this course through zoom meeting only uh, meeting link only so it would be better if we make it more interactive because this is all uh, what we see in day to day uh, work up of nephrology cases so uh, so if there are any questions or any queries or any comments or i will ask anything then everyone can open the chat box the chat box as you can see on the top or bottom part of the zoom controller so you can open the chat box and accordingly uh, if there is any response or any comment from any of the students they can write here so that i can read and accordingly ask or Uh, come uh, give answer to your query at the same time during the presentation itself is it clear and i hope the screen is clear uh, screen is visible to everyone yes sir so uh, i will start so as all uh, i hope all the students are either dnb pg students and uh, everyone knows that in day to day nephrology practice when it comes to radiology it is uh, predominantly ultrasound x ray ct and mri so we are going to first look at the normal anatomy normal morphology normal imaging appearances of uh, urinary system the kidneys Uh, mainly when it comes to ct and the same applies to mri as well so just a minute so let me uh, come to very basics like when we do a ct scan of the abdomen either it can be a ncct kuv study plain scan without any contrast just a scan is done uh, otherwise it is a ct urography study so this is what uh, uh, my arrow is also visible and you can see this is a topographic image which is seen on the left side of the screen and on the right side you can see the plane scan so i will just go through the plane scan uh, the nephrology residents need to understand the normal anatomy mainly related to the kuv region so now in the modern day scanner what happens is you you don't specify ki 3 mm 5 mm 8 mm or 10 mm you just take a complete volume and accordingly we can make the slices in different planes transverse plane so this is a typical transverse image this is a typical transverse image now on the left side now you can see a coronal image the imaging plane is the in this plane and uh, third plane is a sagittal image so this terminology should be very clear that this is a axial image and as we go from top to bottom you can see the liver the spleen and this is the part of the kidney on right side and this is the kidney on the left side so very important to look at the kidneys very carefully on the plane scan itself because lot of at most of the times when there is abnormal kft you only do the plane scan and not the contrast scan because of the nephrotoxic effects of the contrast so this is the plane scan where we are not in a position to differentiate cortex and medulla cortex and medulla will only be differentiated with the post contrast scan so here we can see the renal hilum so this black strip is the fat in the renal sinus so this is the uh, renal pelvis this is the renal sinus and this is the parenchyma where you cannot differentiate cortex from medulla and as i go below you can see the hilum and the sinus will be seen at different levels this is the re right renal sinus this is the left renal sinus you can see the left renal pelvis and then we go inferiorly so this is how you should be able to see the uh, attenuation now the appearance of ct ct appearance of uh, normal kidneys is very important and you always need to compare at the right side from the left side to look for any changes of enlargement or edema on ct itself so there is no dilatation there is no focal lesion there is no calculus and the renal parenchyma is normal 
so when this is the plane scan and then we give the contrast so contrast me there can in ct urography there are different phases of contrast which should be very clearly understood by nephrology students and this is the contrast scan and this is the arterial phase so you can see the bright appearance of the aorta the aortic branches are very brightly enhancing and this is the right renal artery this is the left renal artery so we know ki this is a arterial phase scan or the in arterial phase scan what happens to the kidneys you will see bright enhancement of the cortex so this is the cortex on right side this is the cortex on the left side and the medulla is less enhancing so you are in a position to clearly look at the cortico medullary interface so cortico medullary phase so arterial phase enhancing arterial phase of ct scan corresponds with the cortico medullary phase of the uh, renal system so this is a cortico medullary phase and you can see the uh, this is the renal vein this is the renal artery and the renal artery is brightly enhancing because this is the arterial phase the renal vein will show just a mild enhancement if it enhances early very early enhancement of renal vein in the arterial phase suggests that there is some av fistula which should not be there so this is a normal appearance of uh, renal vein on contrast arterial phase contrast on the right side this is on the left side this is the renal artery this is the cortic medullary uh, phase of the kidney then we go to the next phase that is the venous phase of the scan so now you can see the contrast is much less in the aorta and you can see more contrast enhancement in the ivc so this is a normal venous phase of the study the venous phase of the scan now you can see the cortico medullary difference is attenuated now medulla is also enhancing cortex is already enhancing and you can see significant enhancement of the medulla also so the cortico medullary interface the sharpness is gone down as compared to the cortic medullary phase so this is a what you call it as a nephrographic phase nephrographic phase see these phases are very important in ivp you cannot differentiate cortex and medulla in plain old ivp you could not differentiate cortex from medulla but with ct scan you can differentiate cortex and medulla so on a arterial phase scan you can see cortic medullary phase and in the venous phase you can see the nephrographic phase so this corresponds to the nephrographic phase of the ivp which was done in the past not done no, very commonly now because the conventional ivp is now replaced by ct ivp or ct urography so this is a nephrographic phase where the parenchyma is enhancing cortic medullary differentiation is there but not as good as the arterial phase and but there is no contrast in the pelvic glacial system the pelvis is not showing any contrast the ureter is not showing any contrast so this is a nephrographic phase of the ct urography studies this is clear and at the same time always look at the sinus fat the pelvic glacial system and the perinephric area which is all normal even the perinephric facial planes should be seen in all scans whether they are normal or abnormally thickened or inflamed the third phase is a pyelographic phase pyelographic phase is the excretory phase of ivp and and then you can see the contrast and this is a pyelographic phase or urographic phase where the contrast is excreted from the kidneys into the pelvic glacial system so now you can see the uh, ivp and the uh, ivc and aorta are not showing any significant enhancement this is a delayed phase almost 5 to 10 seconds 5 to 10 minutes after the contrast is given so this this time uh, frame should be clear that arterial phase is within 15 to 30 seconds venous phase of the scan what we saw just before this was done after 70 seconds of the contrast injection and this last phase of the pyelographic phase or the urographic phase is the scan done after at least 10 minutes after the scan contrast is given now you can see the cortex and medulla look similar there is no cortico medullary differentiation all the contrast is seen in the pelvic glacial system and extending along the ureter is it clear and then you can still see medullary blush so there is persistent enhancement in the cortex and medulla and some prominent enhancement in the medullary region which is seen as a medullary blush that is all normal at times there can be stresses of contrast in the medullary pyramid as seen here but that is uh, not a sign of abnormality as we can see in this image 
and then you can trace the ureter all the way up to the urinary bladder. So this is a urographic phase of the contrast uh, urography study. So is it clear? So these are the basic axial images which can be seen with multiple CT processing tools. We can see the arterial phase as main renal arteries. This is the venous phase where you can see the renal veins very clearly. So this is all about the normal anatomy. And if there are any questions related to the uh, normal anatomy, then I can respond to that. Otherwise, we will proceed further with more clinical cases. Any questions? So coming to the common cases in nephrology where radiology helps in diagnosis making. So I am going to show some illustrative examples and if there are any questions or queries you can ask. So this is a non-contrast or plain MRI scan. What the normal anatomy, I just mentioned the cross-section anatomy related to CT applies to MRI also. But in MRI, the things are a little more complicated as compared to CT because in CT, you have a single image. It is only a plain scan or contrast scan or it can be uh, different phases of the contrast. But in MRI, uh, things are little complicated because there are different sequences. So first of all, most important is to understand which sequence is this. So this is a axial image and you can see this is a liver, stomach and the spleen and you can see the vertebral body and this central part is the cervical spine, uh, cervical uh, spinal cord, sorry, spinal cord and the surrounding area is all CSF, the bright CSF suggests that this is a T2-weighted image. So whenever the image shows fluid area as bright signal, it is a T2-weighted image. And on the other hand, uh, I will just show this another image. So this is another image on your, we have two images. The image on the left side shows CSF as bright signal. The central part is the spinal cord. While in this another image, you can see the vertebral body the central part is the spinal cord and the surrounding area is all dark. So the CSF is dark, the stomach is dark, the stomach contents are dark, that means this is a T1 weighted image. So this is T1, this is T2 weighted image. And now we will look at the renal area. So I am scrolling the axial T2 weighted images from above downward. This is the adrenal, the right adrenal, the left adrenal. Then look at the right kidney and the left kidney. This patient presented with acute onset renal angle pain and tenderness. So before going to right kidney, I am going to show you the left kidney, how the kidney normally looks like on a MRI scan. So as we have seen on a CT image, the corticomedullary differentiation is not possible on CT on a plane scan, but on MRI, you can still make out the medulla is separate. A separate area without giving any contrast. So that is the advantage of MRI that you can, the soft tissue resolution is more. So even if you are not in a position to give any contrast, then MRI is in a position to differentiate the cortex and medulla and lot of other things because of the superior soft tissue resolution. Then another important thing is ki on a, uh, as compared to CT, CT may you are not in a position to make a lot of interpretation about the vessels because vessels are not optimally seen unless there is gross abnormality in the vessel. You need contrast for a vascular assessment on a CT image. But on MRI, the vessels always show flow void. In the patent vessel, like this is a aorta, 
this is the aorta which looks black so this is a normal flow void so normal flow void is seen even without giving any contrast similarly this is the left renal artery which is black means flow void that means it is patent and normal then again renal vein is seen as black flow void is seen that means it is a patent renal vein on the left side so without giving any contrast we know that this is a normal venous structure or normal vein even the renal artery is seen as normal without giving any contrast so a gross assessment of the patency is possible on mri without giving any contrast as seen in this then we can see the left kidney is all normal the renal hilum is normal renal vessels are normal there is no dilatation hydronephrosis or mass lesion the renal parenchyma the cortex and medulla is normal differentiation is also seen you can see the smooth surface there is no inflammation in the surrounding uh, area as we can see in this uh, image sorry so actually your class is long filling this sorry class only that is the time so actually we will talk about the process of what will be seen in the so uh, when we look at the so this is the normal uh, left kidney now compare this left kidney with the right kidney and look at the appearance and dimension of the uh, right kidney so you can see the ap dimension of the right kidney even morphologically even visual inspection will show that this is enlarged as compared to the left kidney this is 5.8 in ap dimension this is 4.2 on the left side so this is the right kidney is enlarged and edematous clearly from the ap dimension you can make out that this is the enlarged kidney though the right kidney also shows normal appearance of the renal vein normal appearance of the renal artery on the right side then look at the parenchyma more carefully and you can see the this is the normal cortex normal medulla on the left side look at the cortex and medulla you hardly can make out any differentiation between the cortex and medulla on the right side this is enlarged edematous kidney the renal pelvis is also slightly dilated and then you can see the urothelial thickening on the right side then look at the signal intensity mri is all about signal intensity you can see multiple wedge shaped areas multiple wedge shaped areas arising from medulla and fanning out to the cortical region so multiple wedge shaped areas of t2 dark signal intensity are seen all over from the upper pole mid interpolar region and the lower polar region and then you can look at the perinephric fat so the perinephric fat also shows significant inflammatory changes on the right side so otherwise there is no obstruction no calculus uh, or uh, obstructive lesion in the right kidney so this is typically the appearance of renal pyelonephritis on the right side and the left kidney is normal now whenever there is pyelonephritis you need to be clear about what exactly whether there is any area of liquefaction whether there is any area of uh, pus formation so there is something called as diffusion weighted images so this is a diffusion weighted image diffusion weighted images are uh, the you need to understand the basic of diffusion weighted images diffusion weighted images helps in further characterizing or evaluating whether there is any pus formation or not now you can see the uh, this is a diffusion weighted image which have different b values that you don't need to go into the details but this diffusion weighted images may area the purpose is to look at areas of restricted diffusion so whenever there is uh, this is based on the brownian movement of the molecules uh, in a freely available space and they can be picked up so areas with normal brownian movements of water molecule is happening that will be seen as dark so this left kidney may it is all normal so this is normal and don't show any abnormality on this image but on your right side you can see the right kidney shows abnormal white signal white areas that means there are areas of restricted diffusion and then you can see this focal area of bright signal which also suggests that there is a restriction of the diffusion in this particular area so that means that the pyelonephritis is leading to liquefaction pus formation early pus formation though it is a small area in the right kidney which further complicate the situation and now it is almost a renal abscess formation though it is a small one so this is how you will look at the pyelonephritis on mr imaging 
Is it clear? If there is any query, any doubt, you can, you are free to ask or you are free to write your comments using the chat box. So I am going to go to the second case. Unlike the first case, the, the patient in the first case had acute loin pain on the right side. We had done a right uh, plain MRI and seen how to diagnose and interpret images related to acute pyelonephritis. Okay, so Dr. Dheeraj is asking, what is the investigation of choice for pyelonephritis? So pyelonephritis may uh, given a choice, see, one thing is very important and all nephrologists should be very clear about this. Uh, if you have to, if you don't want to give any contrast for the reason of re uh, contrast toxicity or anything else, nephrotoxic or KFT is abnormal. And if single imaging is to be done, then plain MRI is always better. So if the patient is compliant, patient can hold breath and can cooperate with a 30 minute scan, then MRI is always better because it will help to diagnose pyelonephritis and also to look at the renal abscess or liquefaction at the same time. So MRI, plain MRI is always the modality of choice if you don't want to give contrast because MRI has a higher resolution to look at the vessels and other cortex medulla with higher accuracy without giving contrast. But if the contrast can be given, then CT urography is all right. CT only scores over MRI in terms of assessment of the stones, renal calculus. Otherwise, MRI is the single most important investigation which helps in assessment of pyelonephritis, renal abscess, or small focal of renal abscess in a pyelonephritis patient. Dr. Arpit Jain wants to know whether DWA differentiate pus from the humerus, so that is correct. Because when you see DWA, you don't only look at the DWA because you have to look at other images also. So, Whenever there is restricted diffusion, it can be pus, it can be blood. But again, the blood will be seen as bright signal on a T1 weighted image. So you have to compare that with, with the T1 weighted image also. So depending on appearance on T1, T2 and diffusion, you will be in a position to differentiate that this is pus, this is blood, this is urine, or this is just a fluid. Dr. Anish is asking, at what time we can see radiological improvement in MRI after clinical resolution of pyelonephritis? So this is a very good question. This is very important because even after two to four weeks after the symptoms are improving, the uh, kidney uh, and the perinephric fat may continue to show some changes of pyelonephritis. So that is possible because MRI is very sensitive to pick up water contents in the kidney and the surrounding area, the inflammation. So the changes will be seen, but definitely the changes, if you have a baseline scan, you will be able to see the radiological improvement uh, as compared to day one versus follow. But the changes will continue and will normalize by at least three to four weeks only. Okay, so uh, good that uh, students are now responding and asking their doubts. So again, we go to the next case. This is again adult patient. Uh, you can see the okay. So this, uh, unlike the first patient, had pain on the right side. Now this is an adult patient who presented with acute onset left lumbar region pain. And the patient initially had only plain uh, KUV scan or uh, NCCT KUV was performed. So it is important to look at the KUV scan very carefully. I am going to scroll the images from top to bottom and you all can go through, look at the images and just look, try to see what is normal and what is not normal, what is the abnormality. So for your reference, you can see this pleural fluid on the left side, which also is consistent with left lumbar region pain because this is all reactive pain. So now I am going from top to bottom and now you can see the kidney on the right side and the left side. So as I already mentioned, you can see that surrounding fat on the right side is normal, the right kidney is normal and there is nothing, no pain on the right side. On the left side, you can see the enlargement of the left kidney, 
you can see some inflammation in the perirenal fat you can see this you can see my cursor this is the anterior perirenal fascia this is the posterior perirenal fascia this is the lateral conal fascia these facial planes are very thin pencil line or they may not be seen at times if they are normal but if they are seen conspicuously like this that means there is some inflammation in this part and therefore there is an abnormality in the left kidney now this clearly is a enlarged edematous kidney on the left side now look at this image and tell me what exactly is the abnormality anyone this is the normal right kidney this is the abnormal enlarged edematous left kidney so whether this is simply pyelonephritis or there is something else look at the renal vessels whether they are normal or abnormal so it is important to understand that on ct renal vessels yes dr kalyani has mentioned vessel abnormal which vessel rvt is yes, very good very good so it is important for everyone to understand that vessels are difficult to assess on ct unless you give contrast that does not mean you will not evaluate the vessel because many a times only plain mr plain ct scan will tell you that this is a thrombosis this is a normality so you can see the renal artery is all right and this is the renal vein so you just looking at the window you can see the window you can see the bright appearance of the renal vein so without contrast if a vessel is grossly enlarged look at the enlargement of the vessel as compared to the renal vein on the right side this is significantly dilated enlarged so whenever there is a hyperdense signal hyperdense appearance of a vessel in plain scan for example here you can see the renal vein is thick, uh, dilated and bright hyperdense on ct that means this is a renal venous thrombosis and that is the reason why there is inflammation of the kidney there is enlarged edematous kidney and the perinephric fascia is thickened now we need to confirm so we have done a cct image now you can see the renal uh, aorta this is renal artery which is normal and this is again the renal vein which is not enhancing now this is all completely clot filled with clot right from the hilum up to the uh, up to its uh, confluence with the ivc so this is the black area which is a filling defect in the renal vein is all renal venous thrombosis so this is very important and then again you can see the difference in the parenchymal enhancement of the kidneys on both sides the right kidney shows normal cortico medullary differentiation the left kidney shows some diffuse attenuation there is reduction of the total contrast enhancement the cortico medullary differentiation is also attenuated on the left side because of this rvt or renal venous thrombosis so very good and then we can see the delayed image so delayed image you can see this is a delayed scan and you can see the uh, cortico medullary phase is all right the, this is medullary blush and you can see the normal excretion of contrast on the right side but on the left side there is some delay of uh, excretion and then therefore you don't see the pelvic glacial opacification in this part contrast is seen in the lower part there is urothelial thickening of the renal pelvis and then you can see the filling defect now you can see the wall is enhancing the wall of the renal vein is enhancing but the central part is all non enhancing or there is thrombosis so this is renal venous thrombosis leading to enlarged edematous kidney so then coming to this next case uh, this patient had acute uh, left sided pain and i am showing this plain scan from top to bottom and you can see the right kidney and this is the left kidney now you can see the right renal sinus this is the right renal pelvis which is normal and this is the left kidney and this is the left renal pelvis which is slightly dilated so apart from mild dilatation of the left renal pelvis do you see any difference or in the orientation of the kidneys on both sides see kidney the renal hilum should always face the retroperitoneal vessels so this is a anteromedial 
pointing of the renal hilum which is normal so this right kidney shows normal axis but on the left side you can see the renal hilum is pointing anteriorly it should point like this so there is definitely altered axis of the left kidney which is developmental which is since birth so there is some malposition this is not malpositioning just an altered axis this is slightly rotated towards the anterior side so that is one thing and then you look at the this is a ct scan image and i just described you anterior perineal fissure posterior perineal fissure lateral corneal fissure which is quite thickened and then you can see the fat should always be dark like this on a ct scan image the fat should be dark like this this is the normal fat this is the normal fat but on the left side you can see the peri there is this is called soft tissue straining if you see the straining in the fat that means there is an inflammation in the fat so this inflammation in the fat is because of the abnormality in the left kidney now what is the abnormality there is dilatation of the renal pelvis if we trace the ureter you can see the ureter is still dilated 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 and then you can see the calculus in the left tree vu junction so this is a obstructed left sided urinary system and then what is this calcification this calcification is in the vas deferens on both sides the terminal part of vas deferens shows calcification that means the patient is surely a known case of diabetes so as nephrologists often see diabetes as a one of the very common comorbid condition so this is a sure sign of diabetes on a ct scan so so that is also important to know and then you can see this obstructed calculus in the left vasico ureteric junction and this is the dilated left ureter and this is the dilated left kidney but tell me uh, this is a obstructed kidney but what exactly is the cause of so much inflammation in the perinephric region what is the abnormality what is the cause i am showing the contrast image now and this is a pilographic phase so look at the pilographic phase and compare the right kidney and the left kidney now tell me what exactly is wrong with the left kidney what is happening whether this is a normal appearance of the pelvic galaxy system apart from dilatation what is happening anyone so this is the left ureter this is the left ureter which is slightly dilated and this is the left renal pelvis which is dilated but apart from dilatation tension do you see anything abnormal there are lot of streaks so a contrast which is excreted should be confined to the pelvic galaxial system but there are streaks of contrast which are seen outside the pelvic galaxial system that means there is a leak of contrast there is a urinoma formation and that is why you can see this this is a three uh, reconstructed image so you can see the right kidney the pelvic galaxial system this is the ureter this is the bladder and this is the right side which is normal on the left side you can see apart from the ureter there is all streaks of contrast which is tracing the ureter on the right side and this is all because of the urinoma formation what happens whenever there is of ureteric obstruction the there is back pressure changes there is obstruction there is dilatation of the renal pelvis there is dilatation of the renal calyx then the then the most vulnerable of the sense uh, uh, area which is very sensitive for rupture is the calycial angle so that calycial angle can at times give way and there is leak of contrast into the perinephric system and this is what you call urinoma formation on the left side and this urinoma once the urine leaks into the perinephric space it causes inflammatory changes and therefore you see this inflammation which is disproportionate to the degree of obstruction you can have some inflammation in a obstructed kidney also but because of the urinary leak you see this disproportionate inflammation in the perinephric fat uh, in as seen in this particular example so this is another similar case where the patient had a normal delivery normal vaginal delivery and then you can see 
postpartum she presented with acute pain on the left side with renal angle tenderness and this is the right kidney normal the right kidney is all right on the left side again you can see the disproportionate degree of inflammation thickening of the perirenal facial planes fat is all stranded and inflamed and then you go from top to bottom this is all post, uh, postpartum enlarged uterus but there is no calculus no stone there is nothing obstructing on this side someone has written acn acn for this case this is not acn and first thing is keep for acn you have to first see the contrast scan now this is the contrast scan this is the venous phase this is the normal right kidney this is the abnormal enlarged edematous left kidney you can see the fluid and the inflammation in the perinephric fat all inflammation is seen so you see you don't see any significant obstruction you don't see any significant obstructive changes but still you see significant inflammation in the perinephric region why it is so because now we have to see for the solution in the urographic phase this is a urographic phase why urographic phase is, is done in a prone position because ureteric filling is better in a prone position so now i have changed the position to a for better assessment and this is the right kidney normal and then you can see some medullary blush this is also normal so right side is normal on the left side what is happening enlarged edematous kidney contrast excretion is normally happening some dilatation is there but there is no mass no calculus on the left side but you can see the pelvic ureteric junction as there is per leak at the pelvic ureteric junction and the contrast is all tracing tracking into the perinephric perirenal region and that is the cause this urinoma led to formation of uh, this urinoma is there and therefore there is disproportionate inflammation in the left perinephric region despite in the previous case there was obstructive calculus but here there was just a uh, obstructed labor there was some element of obstruction during the labor and that's why there was increased uh, filling uh, increased intraabdominal pressures and this can at times lead to the uh, urinoma formation as happened in this particular case this without any without any obstruction or mass lesion so this is not a common thing to happen but this can happen at times because of the uh, perforation at the periuretic junction and this this lead to uh, and this is not because of other complication is a pyelonephritis but in a pyelonephritis you will not expect contrast to be leaking like this so that's why this is important to uh, understand this uh, possible complication okay then Okay, then this is another example of a common condition which at times is seen by nephrologists. This patient had a renal transplant, and renal transplant was already done almost two years back. And this is a plain radiograph. Any comments? You can see the transplant post-operative clip, transplant kidneys in the right iliac fossa. And what is important is to look at the femoral head. This femoral head. Should should always be like this area. There should not be any increased density in the femoral head region. So this is because of the femoral head avian, a vascular necrosis of femoral head. So this is an important complication in patients who have transplant or renal transplant because of the because of the steroid treatment or because of the uh, previous uh, treatment with steroids. So this is AV, uh, a vascular necrosis of femoral head on both sides, but this patient presented with GI symptoms. So for that, this CT scan was performed, and we can. So this is an axial image, and on your left side you can see the. So this is the axial image, and this is the coronal image. So I am going to directly show you the coronal images. So this is a plain scan because there was, uh, and now you can see the. transplant kidney in its normal location you don't see any peri transplant collection you don't see any thinning of the con, uh, in a transplant kidney the excess the appearance and attenuation the 
uh, appearance of the kidney is normal there is no thinning of the parenchymal uh, renal transplant there is no hydro some degree of dilatation of the pelvic ileation system of a transplant kidney is normal because it is a denervated kidney so you will often see some degree of dilatation which is there otherwise the transplant kidney seems to be all right uh, then what is abnormal is patient presented with gi symptoms and you can see this thickening of the bowel wall in the terminal ileum this is the ileocecal junction so this is abnormal and then you can see multiple areas of focal liver lesions this is a left lobe of liver these are multiple liver lesions this was and the, you can see the native kidneys small shrunken native kidneys on both sides which does not show any abnormality matlab uh, there is a trophy but otherwise no mass lesion in the native kidneys so this and then you can see the avn in the femoral head on both sides which was a complication in this patient following renal transplant so this was an example of a post transplant lymphoproliferative disease or ptld so the commonest location is either a solid organ like liver or bowel loop so this ileum is an important area otherwise lymph node are also important site for ptld or post transplant lymphoproliferative disease but in this case it is mainly seen at the terminal ileum and in the liver so this ptld is something important and should is often at times seen in patient after uh, one or more years of transplant surgery then coming to one another example another case this patient presented this this, this patient presented she is a 42 years female who presented with hematuria and it was a painless hematuria so this nct was performed to look at the cause of hematuria so the moment you come to the level of kidneys anyone who wants to tell me what what is the site of the first thing on a ct scan is to look at the site of blood what is the site of hematuria so you can see the urinary bladder is showing this bright signal in the dependent part of the bladder lumen so this is a large clot so the clot is seen in the bladder so you have to still be sure ki whether it is the bladder origin or it is in the uh, upper uh, urinary system so you need to look at the kidneys so on this image who can tell me whether it is arising from the right kidney or the left kidney so this is the left sided pelvic ileal system and this is the right sided pelvic ileal system so which side is the cause of bleeding anyone right or left yes right 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 is the correct answer as most of you have written so left kidney is normal renal parenchyma is almost symmetrical perinephric fat is symmetrical everything is normal but you can see the pelvic ileal system is normal on the left side but pelvic ileal system is bright so whenever a plain scan shows bright signal in a place like vessel in a place which is supposed to be urine filled always suspect that this is blood so the urine should be seen as a dark area so this is the normal appearance of the urine on the left side while the if the urine shows this appearance it means it is because of the blood so this kidney is bleeding this patient has having hematuria from the right renal origin now right sided cause but there is no mass lesion there is no there is no calculus there is no filling defects there is no apparent abnormality on the right side by what is causing this bleeding so we need to do a contrast scan now on a contrast scan let's see what exactly is the cause of hematuria so on the left side everything is normal on the right side there is no mass lesion there is no filling defect the pelvic ileal system seems to be all right now looking at this different images different phases so this is the arterial phase so in a arterial phase 
as I go from above downwards. This is the image I just told you. So what is happening in this arterial image? The renal artery is seen on both sides. It is normal. And then you can see the renal vein on the right side. The renal vein, as I told you, renal vein should show enhancement, but it should not show significant enhancement in the arterial phase. There is significant enhancement in this case, which is much less than the artery, but it should not show this much enhancement also. As you come to this location, look at the renal sinus very carefully. This sinus is all normal. Normal black is the fat. This gray area is the renal pelvis. This is the vein. This is the artery. So this left side is normal. But on the right side, you can see a lot of white dots. These white dots are enhancing dots. You can see a lot of such white dots on the right side in the right renal hilum. And then at the same time, you can see the early enhancement or early filling of the renal vein. So that means there is some AV fistulous communication in the right kidney. So there is some AV fistula in the right kidney because of the early opacification of the renal vein, because of this crowding and multiple cluster of enhancing arterial structures in the right kidney, because that can explain the hematuria. Now, how to confirm? So then we can look at the Doppler scan. See, Doppler is a very good investigation if someone is doing it properly in a problem-solving way. So this is the clot in, seen in the bladder. This is the right kidney. This is the left kidney. Right kidney shows some dilatation of the pelvic system. Left kidney is normal. Then this is the cluster of vessels which we just saw on CT. This is the cluster of vessels. But how do you confirm that this is? Again, you can see the cluster of vessels. So whenever there is a arteriovenous fistula, the vein ka waveform is all flat like this. But if vein shows wavy appearance like this, it means there is some degree of arterial mixing. So this is an abnormal venous waveform. This is an abnormal venous waveform. There is some phasey city which should not be seen in a renal vein. Renal vein ka waveform should be always flat like this. The arterial waveform should be like this. So this is the renal arterial waveform and this is the renal venous waveform. So this phasey city suggests that there is reduction in the and there is communication with the artery, connection with the artery. And this uh, arterial waveform is also abnormal because you, this is the systole, this is the diastole, this is the systole, this is the diastole. So in a diastole, you expect uh, less blood to flow in the anterior or the prospect in the forward direction. If there is more flow in the diastolic flow, that means there is a reduction in the forward diastolic raised. There is less vascular resistance. Why there is less vascular resistance? Because there is arteriovenous communication. Capillaries allow resistance to be there in a the arterial system. If there is no capillaries, direct AV communication, then this resistance is reduced. Therefore, you can see more arterial flow in the arterial diastolic phase. So this is an abnormal renal artery waveform. This is abnormal renal venous waveform, which says that there is AV fistulous communication. So this is important and then we can Look at the so now we are sure that this is a AV fistula, a AV fistulous, AV fistulous communication in the right kidney. This patient never had any biopsy, any procedure, any surgery, and she had this episode in the past also. She had uh, cystoscopy, ureteroscopy, which never revealed any abnormality because it was the non-urinary cause. It was a vascular cause. So this is a DSA done. You can see the wire in the selective renal artery on the right side. And this is the renal artery opacification. And it is directly going into some uh, capillaries also. But you can see this staining of the renal vein at an early arterial phase. So this is clearly because of the AV fistula in the right renal artery right renal hilum and that is the cause of hematuria which was embolized and patient is completely fine. So therefore, hematuria can be because of multiple causes, urinary cause or vascular cause. So once urinary cause is not seen as in this example because she had two, three hospital admissions in the past when it was all reported to be normal 
as far as urinary system is concerned. So therefore, urinary cause should be vascular cause should be suspected as seen in this case, which can be uh, uh, important cause of hematuria is in this case. Then another case. Okay. So this is uh, a patient. If there are any queries you can ask. This is a patient who is 45 years male, who present who pre had a gradually increasing pain in the abdomen on the left side. And he complained of, this is the first episode of such pain, no previous history of any medical illness, no renal disease, no diabetes, no hypertension. And this pain was there and this is the plain scan which was performed and you can see the right kidneys slightly edematous, otherwise normal, but the left kidney is all completely replaced by this hyperdense areas, which is inside the kidney and in the perinephric region. And then you can see the large area of inflammation on the, in the perinephric region also. So we have done the arterial phase, even the venous phase scan we have performed. We can see the left-sided pleural effusion, which is again reactive in this case. Then we can see this is the spleen, which is showing abnormal enhancement. There is some infarct in the left kidney. And then this is the left renal fossa, aorta. And this is the left kidney, which is all non-enhancing, completely devascularized. The renal vein, renal artery are not seen at all. And this is all inflammation in the perinephric area. So this inflammatory reaction, this hematoma is all indenting the pancreas and the spleen. And then this is the The same patient had a MRI also. So I will show you the MRI that M M then you will understand how MRI can add to the information in a better way without giving any contrast. So this is the right kidney, right uh, renal vessels are all normal. Left renal vessels, the renal artery, the renal vein is all occluded. There is no enhancement on the left side. Aorta is all normal. Then there is this large area which looks like a mass on the left side causing compression on the pancreas, spleen with inflammation in the fat. Now, without a contrast on a T2 weighted image, we can make out this is the renal venous pedicle. This is the left kidney. And this black area is all hematoma in the perinephric and the uh, renal location. This, this is predominantly renal, perirenal hematoma, inflammatory changes and occlusion of the renal pedicle on the left side. So, and this patient had this pain very recently from last seven to 10 days only. So we reported this as a uh, renal arterial infarct or a renal, some form of ischemic uh, renal abnormality with hemorrhagic infarction. Hemorrhagic infarction is there, hematoma is there, and there is this large mass lesion, not a mass lesion, there is no suggestion of neoplastic process. There is nothing to say it's malignancy, though we have not done any biopsy because that is not required looking at the morphology. But the mass effect is too huge. That is because of the acuteness of the disease process. And on, in, on further workup, this patient also suggested to have positive lupus anticoagulant positive. So that may be something related also. And this patient is right now still being worked up and this is uh, because of the vascular complication in the left kidney without, and that to happen spontaneously without any procedure, without any previous illness. So this is how you can look at the complete occlusion of the renal vascular pedicle without giving contrast on MRI, which can be confirmed with CT at the same time because this patient had a normal PFT because the right kidney is normal.
but tissue characterization is all clear and we are sure that this is unlikely to have any tumoral there is no malignancy or mass lesion in this because this is all team effective thrombosis on the left side though we are still not sure about what exactly is the cause of this thrombus in the hematoma in the left kidney though lupus anticoagulant is positive for this but nothing uh, is clear till we have a biopsy or a nephrectomy is done surgery is done so coming to their last case so this is a patient who came uh, with uh, i think uh, acute pain was there and there was abnormal renal functions and this is the ultrasound which was performed which showed normal appearance of the liver some uterine fibroids she was a middle aged female ovarian structures are all normal pancreas spleen is normal and this is the renal fossa yes this patient presented with acute febrile illness she had acute febrile illness for uh, almost a weeks duration and this was the ultrasound done which was showing all the or organs were all normal but this is the appearance of the renal fossa so she never had any surgery or anything but this is what was seen in the renal fossa and this is the liver and you are not in a position to look at the right renal kidney with a normal acoustic window this is the area of right kidney this is the area of left kidney and there was no renal no kidney elsewhere or in a ectopic location so this is the what how will you label it as this is a abnormal or poor visualization of the kidneys on both sides in a middle aged female who presented with acute acute renal acute febrile illness so this was the ultrasound interpretation and whenever such a interpretation is there it is important to always suspect either two things if a febrile patient is there and ultrasound is not able to show the kidneys normally and you see something like this which suggests a abnormal ear focus always suspect either emphysematous pyelonephritis or cortical renal cortical necrosis so we have done the ct for this patient and then we can see the kidneys on both sides on a t2 weighted image so if it is a emphysematous pyelonephritis you would see a different kind of signal not this one so this is not emphysematous pyelonephritis there is nothing to suggest air at this location that no no uh, hydronephrosis uh, no hydronephrosis or hydroureter is seen in the kidney both kidneys look symmetrical with altered corticomodulatory differentiation some thinning areas are also seen in the renal parenchyma but what is important is to look at the diffusion images so diffusion images are also showing abnormal uh, areas of dark signal on adc images but most important is a contrast image so this is a contrast image and if you look at the contrast image carefully the contrast enhancement is all confined to the medullary region the cortical region is all dark on right side as well as on the left side when you can again see a white line on the periphery or along the renal capsule so this is because of the surface vessels so what is happening here is a cortex should enhance intensely whenever there is ct or mri and nephrography or pyelonephrosis phases their cortex enhances more intensely as compared to medulla there is no phase on imaging on ct or mri that medulla should never enhance more intensely as compared to cortex so whether it is ct whether it is mri whether it is nephrographic phase whether it is arterial phase or venous phase cortex should always enhance more intensely as compared to medulla but in this example you can see the medulla is enhancing more intensely as compared to cortex that means there is clearly a cortical ischemic process so this is all because of the acute cortical necrosis in this patient which is can be because of hemodynamic abnormality or even from from acute poisoning or toxication it can lead to acute cortical even snake bite 
is also likely to cause acute cortical necrosis like this. So in this example, you can see this non-enhancing or hypo-enhancing cortex as well as brightly enhancing medulla in this MR image, which is which allows us to make the confident diagnosis of ACN or acute cortical necrosis. And this should always be thought of once you see this image in a patient with acute febrile illness who has suspicion of renal uh, anuria or uh, less urine output. So this is inability to see the kidneys on right side as well as on left side. So only two differentiates, emphysematous pyelonephritis or acute cortical necrosis. But in this example, it is because of the acute cortical necrosis as we can see the reversal of the enhancement in the cortex and medulla. So this is important to remember. So anything anyone wants to ask any particular question regarding this case or regarding the normal anatomy? So if there are any questions. So if anyone has any queries or questions related to any of the cases or related to any normal anatomical appearance of renal system, you are free to ask or any question related to the CT or MR imaging. So Dr. Anish wants to know how is NCCT KUV different from CT or abdomen in assessing kidneys? See, NCCT KUV is mainly when you are suspecting that you have to cover Mainly it is a area covered. NCCT will cover the KUB region, while a CT whole abdomen will cover everything below the diaphragm. Now the contrast phase is completely different. NCCT KUB means a plain scan which covers the KUB region. If you say NCCT whole abdomen, it will cover the whole abdomen without a contrast. If it is a CCT KUB, it means it is a CT urography image where you will have different phases, medullary, corticomedullary, uh, urographic and delayed phase to look and plus the plane scan to look at the urinary system. If you say only CCT abdomen, it will have one phase in the arterial phase, one in the delayed phase, but it will not be a, a different urography phases. So if it is, if you suspect problem in the urinary system, you need to specify that this, you need a CT urography, then only different phases will be there. If it is a general contrast CT, then it will not have different phases. So this, this is important to understand. So if you only want to just do a general screening of the abdominal cavity, then CCT or NCCT whole abdomen is good enough. Uh, can you explain once again the area findings in ultrasound and Doppler? So this is, I will just explain. See, basically what happens ki renal vein, renal vein ka waveform is almost a uniform flow. So, see, this is a spectral Doppler image. You have a Doppler reference image and this is a spectral tracing. This is the baseline and you can see the, uh, this is the centimeter per second for the TSV value. So, in a venous system, typically like a renal vein, you have a monophasic flow. That means that spectral tracing in the diastole and the systole will remain almost similar. So you have a flat waveform like this. So you don't expect phasicity in a venous waveform. Renal vein will have a flat with a slight variation, only a slight variation in the PSV values. But whenever there is an AV fistula, whenever there is abnormality in the venous flow, then you will expect some degree of undulations or phasicity, like the, here the PSV is less, here the PSV is more towards the negative direction. More PSV, less PSV, more PSV, less PSV. So this is a wave phase, phasicity. So if it is, now again, if it is a direct AV fistula, if there is 
if renal biopsy is done and there is direct communication of the renal artery in the renal vein you will expect almost arterialization of the renal flow so you will not see phagicity you will see complete arterial like peaks in the renal vein so that means it is a direct av fistulous communication but here there is no direct communication between the renal artery and renal vein it is through the smaller branches in the renal hilum so that's why it is only slight increase in the phagicity otherwise normal is a monophasic flow then what happens in a arterial flow this is the systole this is the diastole this is the systole this is the diastole so systole when there is high flow then it comes down but in a renal artery you will always have some forward diastolic flow you will never have a zero forward diastolic flow in a diastole so having some flow in the diastole is all right but this is significantly high diastolic flow and it, there are different ways of measuring it also depending and accordingly you can have pi and ri value so this is a very low pi value very low ri value that means that there is a reduction in the forward diastolic there is more diastolic flow more flow is going towards the kidney in a diastole than normal that means there is a reduction in the vascular flow resistance why this is reduction because some amount of flow is direct going through into the renal vein rather than going into the renal capillary filtration so that's why the flow resistance is reduced because of this av fistula so that's why we can see changes in the renal artery as well as the renal vein how can we differentiate between blood pus urine on usg see uh, blood versus pus versus urine is very very clearly possible to differentiate only on mri because mri has a high soft tissue resolution and it can do tissue characterization with t1 t2 and other sequences you can say ki this is blood this is pus this is urine but on a uh, ultrasound if you only ask me then urine will show any kind of appearance pus may show more internal echoes uh, but very difficult to be very sure ki this is pus this is not urine uh, blood will the appearance of blood will depend on its nature like whether it is a acute blood or it is a subacute blood or a chronic blood so acute hematoma will be very hyper dense hyper echoic or bright but a uh, slightly acute or subacute blood will look like a, uh, a dark area or hypodense area only so in that case it is not possible to differentiate blood from pus so urine will always be very black with minimal internal echoes but pus and blood can be difficult to differentiate from each other because they will look both look dark in most of the acute and subacute phases of the blood so therefore uh, ultrasound may it is not possible to differentiate them all the time the urine ka differentiation is possible but again uh, the most correct way of differentiating these three is mri only not even at times ct also will not be able to tell you that this is blood because ct may differentiation is based on the ounce field unit the value of the uh, attenuation the whether it is hypodense hypertension or how bright it is so at times it is possible at times it is not possible again very bright or acute blood will look bright as we showed so that uh, perirenal hematoma case so that was bright because it was a recent hematoma over time that density will reduce and then it will become difficult to differentiate between pus and blood but mri will always be able to differentiate pus from blood from urine because of multiple sequences how das looks on usg in case of stone disease what is das dr tky what is das i don't understand how das looks on usg in case of stone disease diffuse acoustic shadow okay okay you mean to uh, say see i think 
you are uh, you want to ask something related to the diagnosis ultrasound diagnosis of stones see uh, this is a this yes this is a very important question and as a nephrology student you must have seen lot of outside ultrasound reports where renal calculus is mentioned and when ct is done it is all normal so that happens because of the wrong interpretation at times what happens ki ultrasound is going to show echogenic area whenever there is any interface whenever there are interfaces multi more interfaces more bright on ultrasound so here you can see this uh, bright area in the uh, left renal pelvis because of the prominent fat here so fat will have multiple interfaces that's why it is looking bright but you don't see any area which is showing casting any shadow so the most correct and uh, accurate diagnosis of stone calculus on uh, ultrasound is only possible when you see a well circumscribed bright area with distal shadowing so the focal shadowing should always be clear uh, if it is a dirty shadowing if it is a dirty shadowing with mix of gray areas then it is unlike to be a stone because it can be because of the air that's what you are referring to as diffuse acoustic shadow this if it is a dirty shadow it is air if it is a focal shadow it is a stone then several other things are important that the stone should be lying at the this this you can see this triangle here this is a focus of the ultrasound beam so if the stone stone should be lying at this line all the time only then you are in a better position to look at the shadow clearly then image should be zoomed optimally only then you will be able to see the uh, shadow nicely then the brightness should be optimally set only then the shadow will be clearly seen so if the shadow is clean like there is nothing on other side stone and then a discrete black area then it is clearly a shadow clearly a stone uh, and another thing is ki uh, if if it is a mixing of colors mixing of gray shades then it is most likely the air which is causing artifact and then if there is any confusion this doppler uh, color box can be used this this kind of doppler should be uh, used whenever there is a stone stone will have multiple interfaces and there is always some artifactual uh, color which is generated distal to the stone so this color box also helps to confirm that this is not air and this is a true stone this should be used at times what happens is there is some uh, tortuosity in the renal ves vessel and it can lead to some abnormal shadowing so that should not be confused for stone so therefore technical settings are important and look at the the discreteness of the shadow should be there only then it should be labeled as stone otherwise it is a artifactual shadow or some air focus So anything else any other question related to nephrology if you want to ask how to differentiate between atn and rejection in post renal transplant yes so this is very important and uh, rather this is a complete lecture in itself atn versus rejection in renal transplant i will just tell you one very basic point uh, actually in uh, doppler as well as mri helps and uh, in differentiating atn from rejection but uh, Uh, there is always gray areas in differentiating this more with doppler but new technique like bold mri blood oxygen level dependent mri is something which i will uh, be not be able to show you the slides right now but that helps in this but what you need to understand is atn and rejection may in rejection there is more uh, reduction in the diastolic flow so in acute tubular necrosis you will be still be able to make out 
some blood in the diastolic part of the renal artery doppler but in rejection there will be the uh, the diastolic flow component will be re reduced very close to the zero value or the baseline value so the key point on doppler is to look at the diastolic part of the waveform and see whether the diastolic forward flow is preserved or it is reduced if it is reduced it is rejection if it is relatively preserved then it is atl similarly on bold mri it depends on the oxygen levels at the medullary location so that is a different thing but on doppler it is the flow during the diastolic part of the uh, waveform if it is reduced it is rejection if it is preserved it is atl though there are gray areas to differentiate there are no hard cutoffs so that's why we rely on the doppler waveform doppler parameters so these parameters are kind of there is overlap to and no single cutoff that's why there is, it is difficult to differentiate atn from rejection and you have to do biopsy so that is the reason why functional mri is now coming up in a big way where at times and this is still evolving the bold mri the diffusion mri and the perfusion mri uh, is all evolving right now and it in future it is going to reduce uh, or help you to decide when biopsy is required when biopsy can be avoided so this functional mri is the next big thing which is going to completely replace the need for doppler to differentiate atn from acute rejection So thank you so much for this much awaited class for the students, sir. Uh, one thing more I wanted to know, uh, can we share the recording with the students, sir, for this class? Yes, yes. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, sir.